So the AI race is continuing on. Model providers making their own agents is the biggest shift we've seen. It just shows that wrappers built around these models always have a chance of getting replaced. We saw this with Claude Code, where it completely outperformed Cursor with both price and performance. But now the competition among providers is heating up and different providers are trying to find their competitive advantage. Gemini and Quen both offered almost free agents with generous request quotas, but they still didn't have the capabilities of Claude Code. But that's changing. In this video, I'll show you how Gemini CLI is catching up with recent amazing updates, and they've also released a pretty incredible feature that Claude Code doesn't have right now. Right now, Gemini CLI gives you 60 requests per minute and 1,000 per day. If you're confused about how much you can actually do with this, don't worry. I'll clear that up in this video. With these requests, you get the amazing Gemini 2.5 Pro Thinking model, one of the best models out there. So let me show you what they've introduced in the tool, along with the new feature that I mentioned. Now, a quick break to tell you about today's sponsor, Skywork. Can AI really replace an analyst, researcher, and designer all at once? Meet Skywork Super Agents, built on Skywork's open source multimodal model stack. It includes models like Skywork R1v3 for language, Skyreels for vision tasks, and Skywork MOE, a mixture of experts model that routes tasks to specialized sub-networks. This architecture allows Skywork to handle reasoning, code, visuals, and research all from a single prompt. Watch this. One prompt gives me a fully cited document, traceable down to paragraph level sources. Another builds a slide deck with smart visual layouts. And it even generates spreadsheets with real data and auto-rendered charts. Everything is editable, exportable to PDF, PPTX, or Google Drive, and backed by real research. Skywork super agents aren't just fast. They're open source, transparent, and built for serious work. Try it now. Link in the description. Let me start by showing you the repository I'm currently working in. In this directory, under the commands folder, you'll find two main commands. These function as your slash commands in the Gemini CLI, the add command, and the page command. I'll explain both of them in detail shortly. I'm using these slash commands because I've connected the ShadCN MCP, which is currently active as you can see here. Speaking of MCPs, the process for adding them is quite streamlined in this CLI. In Claude Code, you need different add commands for various MCP types. It's different for HTTP MCP servers versus local MCP servers. Here, you can add them directly to your settings.json file. This approach is much more similar to how Cursor handles MCP integration. You simply get the configuration and paste it in, and it starts working immediately. You might have noticed that Gemini also uses TOML files for its slash commands, and the format is quite different and detailed compared to other systems. Returning to the Gemini CLI features, while I couldn't locate a plan mode at the moment, it does include an accept edits mode and a YOLO mode. You can toggle YOLO mode using control plus Y, which functions like the dangerously skip commands in Claude code, allowing the system to continue running without interruption. Let me show you what I'm working on, and I'll share the request count at the end to give you a full picture of how those free requests are utilized. I've asked ChatGPT to help me clone the to-do list app. For this demonstration, I'll focus on the front end to see exactly how many requests this process consumes. My approach is to build this step-by-step -step using two different strategies. I can either generate an entire page at once with its basic structure, or I can add individual components to that page. For example, I might generate the complete task list page first, then separately add a modal pop-up to it. While the modal is still part of the same page, it comes from a different prompt, giving me more control over the build process. I can also start completely fresh with new pages as needed. To streamline this workflow, I created two slash commands, add and page. The page command generates a full page while the add command adds individual components. Both commands work with additional context and instructions and both require the MCP server to function. One of the newest features Gemini offers is IDE integration. For example, if I switch over to VS Code, you can see I'm running Gemini in the terminal. Let me open up a new tab and show you this new New integration. After I enter the ID command and check the status, you'll see that it's now connected directly to VS Code. All you need to do is run the ID command and it will automatically install the Gemini CLI companion extension for you. The integration with the ID here is actually much deeper than you might expect. If you're working as a developer on a large scale product, the context of the code base is often too big to hand over to the model all at once. You need to carefully review the changes it's making to ensure the code doesn't break. This is 
where Gemini really shines. It provides inline diffs right in the IDE for code review. For example, I have this small HTML app here that I was testing earlier. If I wanted to add support for multiple lists, Gemini will start editing the relevant files. Just like Cursor, you get a confirmation menu. After it modifies the files, it asks for approval both in the terminal and inside the IDE itself. You can then see the inline diffs and decide whether to accept each change. Gemini walks through the modifications one by one, giving you complete control over the process. Before I reveal how many requests were sent through those prompts, let me show you some features you might have missed if you haven't been keeping up with Gemini's development cycle. The first one is the compress feature, which compresses the context of the chat. Claude already has this. Then there's the copy command as well, which lets you copy the latest result. This makes it easy to paste the output somewhere else or share it with another AI coder for additional context. They've also introduced themes and quite a lot of them too. Now going back to my session, you can see that I started with the first first prompt using the page command and the next JS app was already set up. I didn't build that part myself, but as I scroll down, you can see everything it generated. If I skip to the bottom, you'll notice that once I ended the session, Gemini provided a summary including the total active time and how many requests were consumed. In this particular session, I used about 95 requests, even though I only sent around 9 prompts that averages to roughly 10 requests per prompt. From what I can tell, this is because the tool calls are being counted as requests, not just the prompts I sent. Throughout this entire session, I was using the Gemini 2.5 Pro model. Based on this usage, I could run the equivalent of about 10 sessions with the same overall request capacity. And here's what it produced. You can see that it correctly followed all the prompt instructions and built the site exactly as I had planned. You can also see that this theme has been properly applied. I also had Gemini apply this notebook theme that I sourced from TweakCN, and I think this looks really great. For 95 requests, this isn't bad. Now, one thing you'll notice when you open up the slash commands is this new feature called extensions. This is the feature I mentioned earlier that Claude Code doesn't really have an equivalent for. After looking into it further, I realized it's actually really powerful. In real development workflows, especially when you're building larger projects rather than just small implementations or landing pages, this feature can make a significant difference. At the moment, I don't have any extensions set up, so this is what you'll see by default. But let me explain what they are. Extensions Extensions are essentially a way of adding external functionality to the CLI. They can include custom commands, configurations, and much more. In simple terms, they're collections of context files, MCP servers, and custom commands that you can package together. Unlike hooks, which were just ways to run bash commands programmatically, extensions focus on bundling resources into modular, shareable collections. For example, if you're working on a team with specific coding standards, you could create an extension called Code Standards. Inside that extension, you'd include a standards.md file with all the context, and the agent would automatically reference it whenever the extension is active. Extensions also let you attach MCP servers so they can run external commands directly. To make this clearer, imagine creating a front-end development extension that uses the shadcn MCP server. Inside your Gemini folder, you would have an extensions folder, and within that, a folder named shadcn toolkit. That folder would contain several key components, a configuration file, file with the extension's basic setup, a gemini.md file with the necessary context, any custom slash commands related to it, and even reusable templates for the project. In the configuration file, you would define the shadcn MCP server, link the context file, and specify restrictions, like preventing it from modifying your .env file or deleting important files. So extensions are essentially collections of tools, contexts, and commands. You can think of them almost like specialized sub-agents built for specific workflows, in this case, front-end development with Shad CN UI. Unlike dumping everything into one massive slash command like you might with Claude Code, this system is much more modular. You can split templates, commands, and context into separate files. The real value here is that extensions are shareable. Teams can package and distribute standardized extensions, like linters or development toolkits, so everyone can work with the same setup consistently. That brings us to the end of this video. If you'd like to support the channel and help us keep making making videos like this, you can do so by using the super thanks button below. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.